Hello everyone and welcome to the next HCC Sim tutorial. In this tutorial we will go through how to create a mineral processing flow sheet with these specifications and it includes how to use the mineral processing unit operation models and how to create streams with mineral and particle size distributions. This tutorial is divided into two parts. In the first part we will go through how to draw the flow sheet and assign the mineral processing models into the unit operations on the flow sheet. Also we will go through how to define stream setup with uh, minerals and uh, particle size distributions. In the second part we will go through how to use the mineral processing DLL models, how to set the parameters and check the stream connections inside the units. We will start by creating the flow sheet and we have pole mill, pump sump, hydrocyclone, conditioner and flotation cell in the flow sheet. So we start with the pole mill. We write here pole mill and drag and drop it there. Then we get the pump sump and we drag and drop it there. Then the hydrocyclone and a bit bigger also flip it vertically and then conditioner and a bit bigger and then finally tank cell and we can find with TC A bit bigger okay so that's it we have now the flow sheet made next we will draw the streams so we have the input stream for the ball mill uh, water feed to the ball mill then from ball mill to the sump water feed to the sump and then we have from sump to hydrocyclone and then we have hydrocyclone overflow to the conditioner hydrocyclone underflow recycled back to the ball mill then condi from conditioner to the flotation cell and then tails and concentrate Okay. After drawing the streams, I have adjusted the model a little bit by changing the stream names and also resizing some of the units. Uh, I won't go through that now since I'm pretty sure that you already know how to do that. Next, let's start to define the model itself. So currently all of these units are empty. They don't contain any kind of model. And once I double click any of the units, this select unit models dialog will open. In this dialog, I can insert the models inside each of the unit. So now uh, the ball mill that I double clicked is automatically selected. I go to the particles tab and then find the correct, mo correct model I want to use. In this case, I want to use the bond ball mill model. So I double click that. For the conditioner, I want to use the condi conditioner model. For the flotation cell, I want to use the flotation cell model. For hydrocyclone, efficiency curve. And for sump, I'll use a perfect mixer. Now I have selected these models for my units. I press OK. And the models are loaded into each unit. Now when I double click the unit, I have the model parameters here and can also see the inputs and outputs of that unit. Next, let's define the input streams. So unlike in the reactions and distributions, if you want to define a mineral processing stream with particles and minerals, you define it to the stream itself and not inside the units. So in this case, I right click the ore feed and press the open stream setup. 
it will open me a setup and in here I define the stream. In the stream setup on the left here we have a navigation bar which helps us to go through the stream definition step by step. So first we have the total flow rate, then we define the minerals, then the size classes, then distributions and then compositions. Up here we have some tools related to each step and if they are grayed out that means that you don't, cannot really use them at that step. For example if I press minerals I get these active, if I press size classes I get these active. So first we start with the total flow rates and here we want it to be 600 so I put 600 here. Then uh, it was said that the ore feed solid target should be 93 so I could calculate it by myself here but I can also use this solids percentage target and insert here what is my solid percentage. Then the program will automatically calculate the liquid flow rate. Then when I go to the minerals, I can define all the minerals in my stream here. So in this case we had three minerals. We have the chalcopyrite, pyrite and quartz. I press add mineral from database and I search and I get a lot of different uh, chalcopyrites but in this case, since this is a simple case, I want to use the stoichiometric one. I double click it, then I search for pyrite, double click stoichiometric and then quartz, double click and press OK. Now I can see the chosen minerals here. I see the elemental analysis here and uh, if I click I can see that this uh, pie chart changes depending on which column I have selected. And also in the properties panel here we have some additional information of each of the minerals. These values that were inserted here I can edit at any time so I can change these uh, compositions if I want. Uh, with these buttons I can remove some mineral from the list and I can also create custom minerals or add some elements that I don't have here yet. If I know that in my chalcopyrite there would be some something else, if I, for example, let, I can add it from here and then insert one percentage and reduce from some other element one percentage. But in this case we just use the stoichiometric ones, so I don't need this one, I can remove it. Next let's go to the size classes. So uh, in the size classes we were told that uh, the top size is 5000 and by default it's micrometers as we can see in here. So I write 5000, press enter and then I could add sieves one by one but uh, we want to use the ISO test series to create the sieve series so I will just select this here and then I will get the series here. If you want to edit these sieve sizes you can edit just by overriding this value over here and then the program will automatically adjust the cor uh, corresponding sieve series so that we get a continuous series. Next we have the size distribution and in here, by default, uh, the weight is uh, distributed evenly to each sieve. However, we wanted the uh, we, we wanted the PAD to be four thousand micrometers. So we go click here, set passing size, use the Rosin Rammer, and put four thousand here. And we get a series where we have uh, more weight up here in the bigger sieves and less here in the lower ones. Okay, finally we have the compositions and in here 
by default again uh, all the minerals are distributed evenly to the particle size classes however we had some uh, analysis written in the example so I will write the analysis here and the program will automatically calculate the last one which has tapped to some 100 so the quartz is now calculated automatically uh, if I want to use the same for all I will maximize and then just drag here to the end and now I have equal composition in each particle size class You can also, if you have some kind of elemental analysis, you can select the analyzed elements here, write the analyzed values here, and then use the element to mineral uh, conversion button over here to convert the elemental analysis to mineral analysis. However, in this example, it's not used. Now, after we have finished making our stream, we press update and close. And now it, the stream is loaded to the ore feed. So if I double click it, I can go back to this stream setup to look at the stream that I made. But, uh, and uh, as you can see here, this black circle means that this stream has been defined by the stream setup. Okay. Now as for the ball mill water feed, we want to define the water feed over here. So I'll open the stream setup and insert some uh, guess here. We don't know exactly what will the liquid flow rate be, but uh, just in the beginning uh, I insert some guess here and I'll do the same for the sump water feed. So I'll put some guess here and then update and close. Okay, now we have defined all our input streams and that means that we have finished up the first part of the tutorial. Thank you for watching.